Hi everyone, Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. In today's video you're going to see a sample video that I use to communicate with my clients when I'm mixing or mastering their song. This example is one of my free song mixing offers for Personas Studio 1 Prime Edition, which is a free DAW, which has limitation. And in this video I'm demonstrating and showing the client how to overcome some of its limitations to get a better mix so that the client gets to understand so in the future he'll have better mixing options understands the basics of the mixing and then produce even better songs so I hope you gain some information from this video as well because the client was quite happy for me to share this video with everybody else sharing the knowledge so everybody learns as well and if you want me to mix your songs free or paid you can contact me from my website recordingstudio9.com and I may be taken into consideration till next time as always thanks for watching and enjoy the learning cheerio guys well hi I thought I'd finally make a video for you to show how far I've been hopefully you're okay and uh, all makes sense to you once you watch this Okay, I just want to make sure to let you know that it is on Studio One Prime. So, obviously, there are lots of limitations in here, but uh, this is what I got uh, by just using the free version. Of course, if you've got the artist or the professional version, or if you upgrade later on, you can do a lot more. So, these are all your tracks at the moment, um, as you can see right there. Just going to enable the loop. Um, and all the tracks there I'm using at the moment only one of your uh, vocal tracks other than that everything is being used and let's open the mixer and that's the mixer there so we've got the drums let me close that so it makes more sense so I've got the drums I've colored them as well the bass acoustic guitar all the electric guitars together the piano, the string, your vocals, and then the background vocals. And then what I have done, as you can see right here, is I create, because in Prime there's no buses, so I normally like to bus or group the tracks into one bus. So as you can see, all of the drums, which are colored in red color, you can see their output, their input is just, doesn't matter, who cares. Uh, my interface is different, but the outputs are all can read drums right there. And basically, what they're doing, if I click on it, you can see it's going to drums. Normally, instead of going to effects, it will actually go to bus. But because Prime doesn't support any uh, buses, I'm using effects as my buses. So I uh, just imagine all of the drum, the outputs, instead of going to one main bus, they are actually going, coming right here. Okay? And then the output of this goes to the main. That means now I can control all of the drums with one fader. Same with the, with the bass, acoustic guitar, electric guitars. Now sometimes the, you may not think that it makes sense. The bass is already one track anyway, why not send it straight to the main and you can just control the volume from here. But the sake of simplicity, it makes it easier to be on this side. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faders to play with, plus the reverb. So now I can adjust from here. And, and all over here is just simply being uh, group adjusted the faders that I've adjusted for the drums and then the electric guitars here a little bit of fading and so on and the vocals and, and whatever so now all I need to do is concentrate working the levels right here same goes with the plugins insert you may not see other than the VU meter I don't have any plugins on my actual channels all the plugins happen over here. So as you can see, I've got two compressors for your vocals to bring it really right up. And I haven't actually put much else. I'm still mixing uh, the bass, the drums, and all of that. So I will have 
my insert like the compressors and EQs right here not on the main tracks that way I only need to put one compressor one EQ for all of the four background vocals right here so all of them are going to be BG dash Vox which is this channel here okay and when I put a compressor here that's all I need to do instead of putting one in each channel I just have to put one and then on the main output I'm using an EQ a compressor and a limiter and a view meter and on the output I'm also using another limiter just to make sure that um, even if I push the fader up it's not gonna clip that's very important so when we're exporting it it doesn't clip so so far let's have a listen what it actually sounds like How could you love me if you love somebody else? How could I believe in your lies? Okay, just very quick example. This scale, all it means that when it's six, it means if the needle is hitting zero dB here. All it means that it's minus 6 dB. Because if I put the scale to zero and that needle hits the zero or goes past that, that's already digital clipping. So this way I can make sure that I'm minus 6 dB below the, the below the threshold. That's just going to distort, digital distortion, which what you don't want. I never thought that it could be How could you do this to me? Okay, so let's have a listen. Again, you can hear now how we've got this vocal and then when you go into your um, chorus vocals. But I won't say there's nothing you can do This is the divine This is your final so you can hear your final, your uh, chorus vocals as well is on this channel here, and all the blue background. Um, the rest of his story. This is your final. So you can see how actually grouping them together into single channels or buses in this case, uh, it allows to control and balance all the different vocals, all the different instruments with much ease than having individually going through um, like 25 tracks. I hope that makes sense. Now here I also have some automation. I haven't automated anything else, but I have automated here the guitars. To see what the automation is, I'm going to click here. There's two automation here, as you can see, it's reading this blue line and the yellow line. Let's make them big like that. Okay. So what that actually is doing, as you can see, send mute to the reverb. So it's actually, at the moment, there's no reverb in this guitar. If we solo that guitar. And right here, it will turn. So it turned on reverb. And if we look here, it just turned off again. So, so that's what um, I'm doing. It's just basic automation. And the other one, I'm just bringing up some of the volume of the other guitar. So it's balanced out. Um, 
you should be able to see the faders move of the other guitar as well. I think that's this guitar. No reverb. I'm bringing, uh, uh, here we go, that's right. That's going from the right hand side. It switches to the center so that those two guitars are matched. Let's have a listen in context and you can hear what happens. And then at the end of it, it switches back off because it's strumming and you don't want reverb in there. Hope that makes sense. Hope that uh, is useful to you to know and how to actually do them. And that's just in the automation. And you can draw that by using your, your mouse, where you want it, what time. And you can do that as well. Okay. Okay, well, that's it. I hope uh, that helps you. In the next uh, video, if I do it, uh, I will show you how I've automated some of the instruments, like a piano and guitar. You might, I might want to actually bring them in and out between the choruses and the other verses so that it's not the same all the time, so it's actually changing dynamically, um, and a few other things uh, that I might do. Of course, uh, as you can see from here, I haven't, actually EQ'd or done any compression with uh, anything else. So the drums, bass, especially the drums and the bass guitar will have EQ and compression to make it nice and punchy and upfront. Similar to what I've done for your vocals, I've done the vocals first because that's the most important um, element in the song uh, for me. So that's what I start with first and then I start uh, leveling them so they're all nice and level and then I start using EQ and compression to give the balance between each instrument. Well, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me and I'll try my best to answer them for you. Cheerio. Hi Luciano, I thought I'll do a quick video for you to show you um, what I'm doing with your music. Um, you might have noticed I actually have a new audio interface, the uh, Personas Studio 1824, it's just right there. And I have your project up and I thought I'd play around with the new update of uh, Studio One, version 4.1, which comes in with a new pipeline VST. Basically what that plugin does, it allows me to output the main bus back into um, my audio interface so at the same time that it's going to my speakers the main output actually goes out into my valve compressor that's a tube compressor valve compressor from Pro uh, ART Pro VLA so you will see in a minute how the levels will go up and down so your music will go down into there um, get all nice compressed balanced and then back in to Studio One and then out in to the speakers and then I can compress that output as a mix down as well so that way you have um, much nicer analog sort of compression into your song on the master bus so since I wanted to try that out I'm just using your song 
in there. So um, have a quick look, see what it sounds like. It's not going to sound any good on the microphones of the camera, but um, when I mix it down and send you the file as a WAV file of this one, um, you'll see if you can tell any difference. Maybe very, very small, but very, very important. Anyway, I'll, I'll just play it. One thing you will notice in the mix that I will send you with this video is that because of using the outboard compressor you might actually hear your drums much more powerful, more upfront and more dynamic as well because all the, the kicks and everything else is actually going through that so you will hear the drummer really drumming. I know it's an uh, easy drummer that uh, you, you probably used, it's not a I don't believe it's a live drum. I could tell from the audio source. If it is live drum, then that's one heck of a recording. But anyway, so by using analog gear, you can actually get more dynamics from the song. So let me know what you think. Uh, this has nothing to do with your song. I'm just experimenting, as I said, with my new uh, audio interface. And I just happened to use uh, your song because I've... I have that project up today. <coughs> Excuse me. I have not feeling well as well, so that's why I haven't been able to do any videos. And at the same time, I wanted to actually uh, do a screen capture of your project from the screen, but for some reason, my main computer is not doing any um, screen capturing. I don't know why. Uh, it's on my laptop, but your project is not my, on my laptop. None of this is connected to my laptop, so I can't. I can't give you a screen captures um, until I work out why I cannot do a screen capture of my main PC. Well, anyway, um, hope you enjoy it. I'll talk to you next time. Cheerio.